In this video, we're going to examine part model information inside of our Inventor IPTs. So here I have part model information IPT from our working files directory. And what I'm going to do here is basically change the materials, change some colors, and also get some measurements off of this data. Measurements that I may not have taken during my sketching process perhaps, or maybe just some inquisitive measurements I would like to make. Let's begin by looking at material. Currently, this model is made out of generic material. Now, generic is basically the same density of water. You probably don't want to have everything made out of this. In order to change your material, the easiest way is to go to your quick access toolbar at the top of the screen. Here we have, it looks like kind of a moon sort of shape or a granular sort of circular shape that we have up there. And if we click on the pull down, we can choose different materials. In this case, I'm going to choose gold, because why not? This material is now made out of gold. However, I don't see any color change take place. That's because my color has already been overwritten to be the cyan color. The next pull down over here is basically the color overrides. If I want to go back and clear the override, so instead of being cyan, actually be the color defined by the material, you just scroll all the way to the top and choose clear override. And there we have the metal 1600 color that shows up for gold. Now, if we change material to something else, like let's say lead, that automatically changes the color as well. I'm going to change this to something else. How about a cast bronze or a copper? Now the color override can be whatever you want it to be. In this case, maybe a dark green. You can also type a letter in to get down the list faster, perhaps red in this case. Now that I have assigned material and color, what does the material designation really do for me? I did mention density earlier. How do I find out the weight of this or the center of gravity? Well, if I go to the part model information on the left-hand side, I can right-click on that name and go down to something called eye properties. Eye properties are essentially metadata of the file. It's stored information that makes this file intelligent and trackable through build material information, as well as other things. So if I open this up, I can see I have a general tab here that tells me the size of this file, where it's currently located. If I go to other tabs like project, I can see the part number, the designer, an estimated cost, all this other tracking information that's inside of this file. This is really important because this data can actually automatically fill out your title blocks when you get to the drawing environment for Autodesk Inventor. Now, the reason we came here in the first place was to see our physical information. So let's go to the physical tab. Here, we can see the material is copper, and it has this density, and it also has these general properties for mass, area, and volume. I also have some inertial properties, global, as well as center of gravity. If you come in here to your mass, if you wanna modify this to be something that you know it actually is, maybe because you fabricated it or actually weighted it on a scale, you can force the value to be whatever you want. By forcing the value, you can see this little hand icon came in here to let you know that you overrode it. To get rid of that and get back to your calculated value, simply delete what's inside the box and choose update or apply. If we would like to change material, we can also do that here as well. So I'm gonna go back to gold and apply that and I can see the changes take place. I'll go ahead and close out of there and I'm gonna change my color here back to my cyan color. And the next thing we're going to do is analyze some information about the model as far as different measurements. So maybe we'll want to measure some angles or some surface areas. Well, if we go to our inspect tab, we can find different measure tools up here. So we have measure distance, angle, loop, area, and another one that is grayed out called region properties. We'll get to that in a moment. For now, I would like to use the measure distance tool. And this can be done without having to go to the ribbon at the top of the screen. You can actually right click and choose measure from your marking menu. Now, with measure turned on, I can basically come in here and see a bunch of highlights for my cursor as I go over different things. So here it's telling me length currently. You can see that up here on the header. Currently it says measure distance, but now it says length. Here I can see diameter. Maybe I want the length of that entire arc, that entire circle. So if I took a piece of string and wrapped it around here, how long would that be? I can basically use my select other tool, which is the filter I see in front of me right now, to basically scroll through to find other things. So there's the center point, and there's the edge. And I'm scrolling by using the scroll wheel on my mouse. 
you could instead use the pull down and also select that way as well. So I wanna see that edge length. Now it's currently 43.92 inches all the way around. Now, if I'd like to change to something else, I can choose measure angle here. And next I'll choose this edge here and this edge here. And I get that nice blue preview showing me the angle of 18 degrees. You can see it's actually cutting into the center here. Next up, we'll do measure loop. This will actually allow me to measure a perimeter value. So those four edges totaled together will be 7.786 inches. And lastly, you will do area, which allow me to measure a surface area. Maybe I'll choose this flat face up here because nobody wants to do that calculation. So the flat surface area of that piece is 60.6 inches squared. What if you want to add up different values? Well, we can do that through an accumulate method. Here, I'm going to change back to the measure distance option. And you can also adjust your dual unit or precision here if you want to do that. I basically want to do some accumulation of value. So I'm going to begin by selecting the center point of this circle. I'll go ahead and scroll through till I get the center point. Now I'll go to this center point. Well, that currently is 2.121 inches. I'm going to go up to my little arrow here and choose add to accumulate. Now I'm ready to measure another value. Here's another 2.121 inches. I'll add that to the accumulate as well. Do another measurement. Add that to the accumulate. And then one more measurement. I'm actually ready to display the accumulate. I want to see all four of those built together, but I actually have to add this last one to the accumulate set. So basically you have to add everything into a basket. And then once you have everything in this accumulate basket, then you display it. So here I'll say add to accumulate. And now I'm going to display the accumulate to see the total value there is 8.485. If you want to clear it, go ahead and choose that option. It's a little difficult, I would say, sometimes to remember that measurement distance option where you have to build these things into the accumulate, but it's a quirk. It's something you get used to.